This morning we're going to look at how to extract an array with unwind. And if you're looking for a quick solution, this video is not going to provide it. Because this takes a little bit of time to do and especially to understand. But it's very useful to know because from time to time we'll have documents. And in the documents we will have documents with an array in them. And what we will want to do is we will want to extract the array. And we'll want to extract that array as, as their own documents. And so we may want to select a group of fields that we will include in that new document. And so it's very useful to know how to do this. So we're going to provide an example here. And in this hypothetical example, let's suppose we're looking at a pitcher's um, streaks as far as games in which he or she has thrown a strike. Okay. So we have this collection here called baseball. And we're looking at the total number of basically games in which he or she has thrown a strike. And the total, this is the total number of games which he or she has not thrown a strike. And then we're looking at the, the actual streak. So this is the entire um, streak as a group. And these are the past streaks. So what we know is that, um, which for the record, the failure total does not match up with the past uh, streaks because these are the past streaks of success. So the failure total we know are the days or the gaps between. Okay, so let's suppose we wanted to look at the past streaks specifically as their own document. In other words, we wanted, right now past streaks is in this array, but we want, let's just hypothetically suppose, we want it as its own document. And in it we want to go ahead and include um, the broken streaks and then the failure total. So we know that these are past streaks. So for instance, we know that this pitcher in this case had, you know, had a basically a streak of zero, right? And there's no games that they threw a strike. Then we know they had one game, they threw a strike, one game, and then it was broken. And then two games, two games, two games, three games, 11 games, and 79 games. And each time after that, it was broken, right? So let's suppose that we wanted to look at what this is going to be if each of these are their own individual documents. So basically, we're going to have a document that has the past streaks and then we're going to include the broken streaks in the failure, failure total. So instead of this being an array, these are going to be documents. So we're going to call our collection and we're going to call aggregate. We're going to use project because we're going to filter with project the items that we want. Okay. Now we'll remember in some of the earlier videos, if you look at it, we need to specify that ID is going to be zero here because we don't want to include it. If we wanted to include it, we would either specify it as one or we wouldn't include it in our list uh, because it is the ID field. So I want to look at the failure total. I'm going to specify that as one. And then I'm going to look at the broken streaks. And I'm going to specify that as one. And then I'm going to look at the past streaks. Okay, so let's just pause here for a second and look at this. Um, I am selecting the fields, the failure total, the broken streaks, and the past streaks from this document here. Okay. If, and we'll see this in a second, if I didn't select these items when I try to produce documents built around these past streaks, if I wanted these items, the failure total, broken streaks, past streaks, I would not get them because they would not be available to select. Okay. So we use the unwind operator. We're going to use the unwind operator on the actual um, column that we want to unwind. I'm sorry, the field that we want to unwind in this case is going to be past streaks. But it's going to be selecting this item from this group here in project, right? If it's not up here in project, as we'll see in a minute, it's going to throw an error. Or we'll actually, actually, it doesn't throw an error. It just doesn't return anything. Okay, and so we're going to look at past streaks. something was wrong with that syntax. Okay. So what we've done is past streaks has now become part of its own document. We see in the document, and you'll see failure total and broken streaks is, is reappearing as the same values, obviously. 
pass streaks in that array now is its own value, or I'm sorry, is value in its own document. So we can see that we now have this value that was originally an array now as its own in its own documents. Okay, a collection of documents here with those. So that's that can be very very useful, especially there's all kinds of applications here um, to this. What would happen if we decided not to? Let's say we eliminated pass streaks from the project. Because um, there are, for whatever reason, you know, people sometimes don't quite understand what exactly this is doing here, which makes sense. You can see that what happens is it returns nothing, and that makes perfect sense because it's not in our list here, right? It's the same thing. Let's go over here. If we didn't want to look at the failure total, so we don't want to include that in our sub documents, you'll notice uh, that failure total doesn't come up. So now we're just looking at broken streaks. So we know that there's a total of broken streaks nine, and we look at the past streaks here or whatnot. So in the project, we're selecting what we want to return within that document, or within that unwind, I should say. Okay, if we eliminate fields in this project selection here, then it's not going to return when we look at our sub documents. If we only wanted to look at just the past streaks, let's say we didn't want to look at anything else, we just wanted to look at the past streaks as um, its own document, and then we would do that. And as you can see, we're just seeing the list of, um, not the list, we're seeing basically a collection of past streaks as individually their own documents. So that's one of the things we can do. We can, we can select items if we want uh, to look at the whole group of data here. Or we can sit there and just take out a small selection, just looking at these past streaks and breaking it down individually. But unwind is a very useful operator to, to note, um, especially, for instance, if you are wanting to, let's say, get the count of the number of subdocuments. One of the ways in which you can get the count of the number of subdocuments is using unwind. So it's very useful to understand how to do this. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to take some time to kind of explain. It's also important to understand that when you use unwind in the project, you need to make sure that those fields are uh, included. And you'll also you also see I'm sorry you'll also see unwind often used a lot in um, what is it grouping conventions. So anytime you have a lot of conventions with grouping, you may see unwind being used frequently. So uh, keep that in mind when you're, you're passing in your, your group buys. Unwind may come in, in handy, especially when you see a sub-document or you see an array field like that. It can be very useful to use.